Well, continuing our special feature series on curiosity driven science and blue sky research. Today, we take a look at how countries around the world are investing in basic sciences, which is purely aimed at acquiring new knowledge through research, which then provides the basis for applied sciences, which develops new technologies. When it comes to the impact, the U.S., Britain, and Japan top the list with the most number of citations as well as Nobel Prizes every year. How did those three countries arrive where they are? Part three of a four part series with o s u y o u n g To make something grow, you need the right environment. For Britain, Japan, and the United States, three leading countries in basic science, strong institutions and universities provided the funding and the infrastructure to produce groundbreaking research. Dr. Venkatraman Ramakrishnan won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2009 for his research on the structure and the function of the ribosome. He benefited from supportive research environments in the US and the UK. Both countries have been, first of all, open to international talent. They're very open societies that try to attract the best from the world, no matter where they're from. A second aspect in the UK is the diversity of funding. So we have many different kinds of research、uh, enterprises. We have government labs, we have research institutes, we have university departments. Dr. Ramakrishnan says this helps attract a pool of talent from all over the world, which feeds a virtuous cycle of producing world class research. Another core element is giving scientists more control over their fields of research, rather than governments taking a top down approach. The Haldane Principle in the UK allows scientists themselves to specify research policies and the direction of government funding through separate councils and institutions. We also have another stream which comes direct from the government, which is given out to universities quite broadly. It's kind of core funding,、uh, which underlies the research infrastructure and gives universities and their researchers a bit more flexibility. So you can then carry out research which is maybe not something for a specific grant, but is、uh, more blue skies research, is some, some personal idea that you have that you want to research. Another important factor is long termism. In all three countries, those eureka moments took decades of research and investment. The UK has a long history of world changing ideas and discoveries, such as Isaac Newton's law of gravity and Michael Faraday's law of induction. The US and Japan have been investing at least 2% of their GDP in research and development since the 1970s, decades ahead of emerging economies like Korea, which surpassed the 2% mark in the 1990s. Japan made a lot of long term investments in basic science during the 60s and 70s during its rapid economic development. Working with Japanese scientists and mathematicians, I noticed their strong dedication to researching over a lifetime, so they're reaping the results of that right now through Nobel Prizes. Professor Adam Rees won the Nobel Prize in Physics five years ago when he discovered that the expansion of the universe was accelerating. He says research should be driven by the thirst for knowledge, not for short term commercial ends. I think asking or putting the requirement on our curiosity of producing something, let's say money making,、um, really limits our investigations in ways that、uh, probably don't allow us to reach as deep. So in 1917, when Albert Einstein was working on general relativity, a new theory of gravity, There's no way he imagined that this would lead to GPS and our ability to find our place anywhere on the planet. Groundbreaking discoveries and innovations require going back to basics. For Adam Rees and many eminent scientists throughout history, that begins with nurturing the simple instinct of curiosity. Also Young, Arirang News.